What's up, guys? Today, we're going to veer off from our standard topics that we've been going on, right? Unfuck Your Cycle, Project Big Ben. We're going to take a step away from those, and we're going to focus on technique today, talking about how to squat for bodybuilding purposes rather than for powerlifting or strength-related purposes. The differences might be a lot bigger than you think, so make sure to watch the rest of the video to see what's up. So if you guys have been following me on social media, you know that I've been talking a lot lately about training the muscle and not the movement. So let's first talk about what that means. And we'll use the squat as an example. If you're a powerlifter and you're training the squat, your goal is to move as much weight as possible while hitting just enough, enough depth to pass at your meet. That's your goal. It doesn't matter how you do that. It doesn't matter if you have the ugliest squat in the world, the prettiest squat in the world. It doesn't matter if you're bearing your squats or just barely breaking the plane. All that matters is moving the weight from point A to point B within the standards of the competition. So there are a lot of different ways you can do that. Everyone's going to have to find a technique that works for them. But you don't really care whether you're putting the emphasis on your quads, your hamstrings, glutes, lower back. Really what you want to do is divide the load equally in a balance. Let me say it different. You want to divide the load in a balanced manner among all those muscle groups. So if you're very posterior chain dominant, a balance for you might have more posterior chain involvement, right? So it's not exactly equal, but you're still going to engage the quads. That's training the movement. Now let's look at bodybuilding. In bodybuilding, your sole goal for the squat is to get bigger quads. Well, it could be bigger legs, right? You could use the squat as a hamstring exercise. I don't recommend that. So we'll say we're using the squat to get bigger quads. For that, obviously, if you're using a lot of posterior chain, a lot of glute and lower back, that's not helpful. You want to shift as much emphasis as you possibly can to the quads. This is why this whole concept is why you'll see some guys who have massive, massive squats, but they don't have huge legs, right? Look at Jung Hack, for example, who has the all-time world record in the 82 and a half kilo weight class, squats 700 pounds, and yet his legs are, they're athletic, but they're not huge bodybuilder legs. And then you can go on the other side of the spectrum and you can look at a guy like uh, Kai Green, who typically squats with fairly light weights and has absolutely enormous legs. So what it comes down to is the combination of your ability to harness your mind-muscle connection, to put your body in a position where you're able to recruit the muscles that you want to recruit and minimize the involvement of the other muscles that might be involved in a movement, right? And your movement selection, right? It's very, very possible that if you're a bodybuilder, you don't need to ever squat. It's very possible, especially if you have naturally large legs, that you might do your best using hack squats and leg extensions, right? And in that case, there's no reason necessarily to use a squat. I want to dive deeper into this so you guys can really get a handle on it. And so we're going to break down the actual steps that we go through in a squat. And I'm going to show you how you can shift the emphasis to one muscle group or another. So let's start by looking at some of my powerlifting squats. When I'm squatting for strength, what I'm thinking about is trying to engage my strongest muscle groups without putting myself in a position where I'm unable to hit depth. Those are my two weakest points, really, because when you look at my strength curve, I'm more quad dominant, but at the same time, I have a very short torso. And that combination is a little bit ugly unless I'm squatting with a high bar stance, because usually people with a short torso have a very wide stance sit back style to engage the posterior chain that helps them to keep their torso as upright as possible while still maintaining balance in the movement. But because I'm naturally quad dominant, I want to take advantage of that 
And so therefore I use a, a narrower stance, right? And a lot of forward knee displacement and not so much sit back style. Unfortunately, I have that tor short torso. So that means I get all jammed up at the bottom. And to compensate for that, I really have to push my knees out, right? And then make sure that as I go deeper into the hole, I stay very patient. So on my descent, my big cue is patience, but I'm also thinking about, okay, I need to keep the weight centered over my heels. I need to push my knees back. I need to allow my torso to incline to the point where I can keep the weight balanced over my midfoot. And then as I descend, I'm gonna focus on pushing the knees out, right? Keeping the hamstrings and glutes tight. Now I like to squat with knee wraps. When I hit the bottom of the squat, I allow the knee wrap to generate that momentum to get, my, get me out of the hole, right? And then I finish the lift by following through with the glutes. So my quads are naturally gonna work. Remember, that's just how I'm built, right? I'm naturally gonna engage the quads. I don't have to think about it that much. I do need to think about engaging my hamstrings and glutes. So that's why I'm really focusing on them as I finish the lift. That style works extraordinarily well for me in the squat, as long as I have somebody calling depth. Because again, when you're under heavy weight, it's hard as hell to stay patient. And that's a big, big deal for me. Now let's shift gears and look at some of my bodybuilding squats for today. And I think this can be really, really informative, uh, especially if you've been watching my powerlifting squats for a while. So the very first thing I wanna call your attention to is the fact that I'm using the safety squat bar instead of a straight bar. And the reason for that is the safety bar allows me to shift my center of gravity forward even more than a high bar squat does. And that's important because with my short torso, the further forward I can shift my center of gravity, the more upright I'll be able to remain even while I'm squatting with some degree of posterior chain involvement. Because just due to my leverages, I'm not going to be able to completely eliminate the hamstrings, glutes, and lower back from the squat. I do believe that some, very few, but some people can probably achieve that. I am certainly not one of them. Uh, if you're a guy who has, you know, very, a very long torso and very short femurs, it's possible you can squat with almost no posterior chain involvement. I'm basically the opposite of that. The other thing I want to call your attention to is the fact that I'm still, besides remaining upright, and this is a little hard to see in this video, but I'm really trying to control the negative, not by keeping my hamstrings tight, but by keeping my quads tight. And as I descend, I'm almost pushing forward with my feet and, and keeping my weight balanced. Right, so my weight is balanced over my midfoot, but it's almost as if I'm pushing my feet forward and that allows me to shift more emphasis to the quads. This is very much the opposite of a standard cue uh, that's used in powerlifting, which is to claw the floor to engage the hamstrings. Think about doing almost the exact opposite to engage the quads. Now, there's a couple of things I don't like here that I also want to call out. You can see I'm still getting a little bit of forward lean. If you watch the position of the handles of the safety bar, see how they wobble? If I'm keeping the bar path perfectly straight, that's not going to wobble. And what that'll show is that I'm balancing the weight properly and that I'm keeping full engagement of the muscles throughout the range of motion. So there's still a little bit of wobble there, but this is very important part. You're always, always, always going to have trade-offs between using perfect form and using heavier weights. And finding the correct balance between those two is extraordinarily important. If you're focused too much on technique and you're trying to get your technique picture perfect, every rep, every set, I honestly don't believe most people are going to be able to use enough weight to get enough stimulation of the muscle. On the other hand, if you're being sloppy, well, you're definitely not gonna stimulate the muscle and you're risking injury. So there's a balance to be had there. I think I do better on this set. Uh, the tightness of the knee wraps, even though they're fairly loose, they're actually extraordinarily loose compared to my powerlifting style, but that allows me to keep that tension in my quads a little bit easier. Now the flip side of that is it's gonna take some of the emphasis off the quads out of the hole, right? It's all about balance and finding that balance is gonna be individual for you. 
The point I want you to take away here is that the cues you use and the position that you put your body in, right? So in this case, my cue is push my feet forward and use the safety bar. That's going to allow you to use any mo movement for any goal. I know this is kind of a high concept video. It can be very difficult to put these concepts into practice without actually just going to the gym and fucking around until it clicks, okay? That said, I want to make my explanations as clear as possible. So please, 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 if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my very best to address them. That's all I got for today. Remember to think strong and train hard.